Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. Before I start, I want to thank you for coming to my channel, for watching my videos, and for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. Once again, I forgot to show you my shirt, so I have to insert this into the video. I gotta remember to do that. You may not even be able to read that. Uh, basically, what it says is, old guys rule putting the class back in classics. <laughs> uh, it's a shirt having to do with the, a hobby that I pursued for a long time of restoring old uh, Chevrolet trucks. So I'm sticking this in so you'll see it. The first item I have in the news today is one that struck me as really funny. The headline is, yes, CNN, we are a republic. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Correspondent Donnie O'Sullivan roamed among Trump supporters at a recent rally, asking them about their perceived threats to democracy. Quote, obviously there's a lot of criticisms of Trump that he is bad for democracy, these bad for American democracy, O'Sullivan told one couple, who quickly cut the reporter off. Quote, we are a republic. We are not a democracy. We are not a democracy. We are a republic, they told him. O'Sullivan, who is Irish, couldn't quite believe what he was hearing. I've heard a lot of conspiracy theories, he told Cooper later in this segment. I hear a lot of things out on the road, but to hear Americans, people who describe themselves as patriots, say that America is not a democracy, that stopped me in my tracks. <laughs> Annie Applebaum, a historian and writer for The Atlantic who often frets about the grave threats to democracy here and abroad, assured O'Sullivan and Cooper that this Republic talking point is just more misinformation. You are hearing people say America is not our democracy because there are people around Trump who want them to be saying that, who have planted that narrative, she said. Let me set the record straight. We are a republic. That's why in the Pledge of Allegiance we say, and to the republic for which our flag stands. Here's the problem, people and not just the likes of Cooper, O'Sullivan, and Applebaum, don't understand the difference between a democracy and a republic. We are a democracy on election day. The democratic principle is one man, one vote. And we use that principle to elect people into their positions democratically. But we're not voting on any single law. We're voting for a representative who represents you in the republic. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> for those who don't know, America is a constitutional republic. You could call it a democratic republic because we do have some uh, we do have some elements of democracy in our uh, constitutional system, but we are not a democracy. We are a republic, and to hear these people argue that it's misinformation just shows you to me. It shows me how horrible our educational system is. It's not even teaching people the fundamentals. Anybody who knows anything about American government knows we're a republic. That's just, it's as obvious as, if you read the Federalist Papers, and I highly recommend you do if you've not, you can hear and see the Founding Fathers arguing about why America, the, the Founding Fathers, did not choose democracy. They chose a republic. <laughs> and it's just, I don't know, it strikes me as funny. It's funny in a way, but it's sad in a way because, as I say, it's a good example of how horrible our educational system is, that we don't even teach people anything at all about our governmental form, of our, the form of our government. This next article, I'm not going to read to you. I'm just uh, offering it to you for something that you might be interested in reading. It's called Lab Wars Inside One Democrat's 20-Year Crusade 
to save the world from Anthony Fauci. And this talks about a Dr. Richard Ebright, who has been arguing with Fauci since 2001 that he should not be doing gain of function research, that it's far too dangerous. And this talks about how Dick Cheney was behind bypassing the current checks and balances that we had in place to ensure that gain of function research would be conducted. Now, if you want to attribute benign purposes to these people who did this, feel free to do so. But benign or not, the end result was COVID-19. And the end result is that we are continuing to do this kind of crazy research. And I've talked about this a number of times in my news clips. It's just not a good idea and we should not be doing it. But there you have it. Uh, obviously, I'll put the links in the description as I always do. This next article is about the Stanford Internet Observatory. I talked the other day about how they are closing shop and how I said I wouldn't exactly accept that at face value because they often <laughs> they often uh, say one thing and do another. And sure enough, lo and behold, it says that Stanford in their Internet Observatory ditching outsourced election censorship following lawsuits and subpoenas. But if you read down in the article, guess what you find out? Stanford disputed the organization was shutting down telling platformer the important work of SIO continues under new leadership, including its critical work on child safety and other online harms, its publication of the Journal of Online Trust and Safety, the Trust and Safety Research Conference, and the Trust and Safety Teaching Consortium. Communications professor Jeff Han Hancock will incorporate the ongoing work with his Stanford Social Media Lab, according to Platformer. The university decried lawsuits and congressional investigations that it said were chilling free inquiry and undermining academic research, both at Stanford and across academia. <laughs> yes, that's what we're doing is we're undermining uh, free inquiry. Yeah, that's what we're doing. No, actually what we're doing is we're trying to put an end to your censorship regime where you think that because you don't believe something, no one else should be allowed to know about it. This last article, again, I'm not going to read to you. I just put it up because, well, it's disgusting. Courtroom gasps after illegal alien apparently admits he filmed himself raping a 13-year-old in New York City Park. And you can read the story. The guy actually did admit this to the cops that he filmed his rape, and he's been charged. But you know how New York is. Uh, the fact that he's been charged with a crime does not mean that he's going to be tried for that crime. Not under the leadership they have up there. They'll probably offer him something like a, you know, six years probation or something like that. Crazy world we live in. Oh. On to doing music. I love music and I'm going to do some now. But before I do that, I do want to pray for you. I pray that God will bless you abundantly, above and beyond anything you've ever imagined in your entire life, with grace and mercy and love and peace. And that he will do the same for every single person that you love. This is the Vietnam Era Vet out.